Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Faith Fuel Devotionals. My name is Pastor Dustin. Thank you for tuning in. We're in Matthew chapter number six today, starting a new chapter. Last chapter was great in the Sermon on the Mount, Beatitudes, Jesus going case by case through the Old Testament law and making his New Testament applications to it. Today we're getting into a section in chapter 6 which is dealing with worship. Uh, if you have Matthew chapter 6, you will notice uh, kind of where we're going to be going over the next few weeks. It uh, deals with in verses 1 through 4 of chapter 6 and giving or giving of alms or tithing or uh, giving in the sense of worship. Verse 5 all the way through 15 deals with prayer, and inside that you have the famous model prayer of the Lord Jesus. And then verse 16, 17, and 18, we are going to be talking about fasting. So three big um, speeches about worship here in our personal worship. So I want to talk a little bit about this today, and we're going to be focusing in on the first four verses. Now, when I say the word worship, what do you think that means? Uh, usually think people say, well, yeah, prayer. There are many ways to worship God. Worship is when we bow our hearts and we lift up God in our hearts, which results in us lifting up God in our lives. When we share the gospel, we're worshiping. When we go to church, we're worshiping. When we are praying or even giving, as we're going to see today, these are all forms of worship. How I raise my kids and how I love my wife are all forms of worship uh, and can be and should be. Life is worship. Everything we do centers around the worship of something. And so when we talk about worship, there are right ways to worship and then there are wrong ways to worship. And Jesus has been looking at the, the nation of Israel in his modern time and he says, there's some big problems here. And he's going to be dealing with some issues that were going on in his day. And he's going to be showing us how to properly worship, or as I'm going to say, biblically worship. So today, let's start with proper or biblical giving. Verse 1 says, Take heed what uh, that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So we see here some some practical, helpful uh, tips that Jesus gives us on, on biblical almsgiving or biblical giving. So let's jump right in here. In verse number one really talks with this idea of being seen. Uh, and it talks about this word that we may not be familiar with, which is the word alms, A-L-M-S. What is an alm? Well, an alm is anything given gratuitously to relieve the poor, such as food or money or clothing. Another word that we have is called charity. So whenever you do charity or give your alms, there needs to be a certain way you do this. Well, wait a second, Pastor Dustin. Let's go back because in Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 16, it says we're supposed to let our light shine. So if I'm supposed to let my light shine, why am I supposed to be doing my giving, my charity in secret? Well, it does say in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And so what we talked about there is we're supposed to do things that glorify God. We're not supposed to do things that glorify us. And sometimes, because of our pride and because of our, as Jesus is about to say, hypocrisy, we can do things for the wrong reason. And that's what he's talking about. He's saying you should be showing good works and doing good works, but make sure you get glorified who needs to be glorified, and that is the Lord above all. The key phrase here is to be seen of them. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. And uh, it's not about us being seen. Uh, John 12, 43 talks about many people in that day, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. 
And that is a very important thing. When we do anything when it comes to worship, we're doing it for God and not for us. Jesus is concerned about motives more than action. You can do something right with your hands, but if your heart's not in the right place, you're not doing it properly. We see man's view there, but we also see God's view because it says in the second half of the verse, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. God is not going to bless you if you're doing the right, the right things for the wrong reasons. He's only going to bless you if you do the right things for the right reasons. And it's called being a hypocrite when you do things for the wrong reasons. Why do we do what we do? Why do we give? Why do we pray? Is it to be seen? If we're doing it for that reason, then we're doing it wrong. And there are many people out there who do, do things of worship improperly or unbiblically and god says you're wasting your time it's kind of like getting stuck out in the mud uh you can if you have four-wheel drive you may be able to get out but if you have just two-wheel drive you're going to be spinning your tires that's what a lot of us do in worship sometimes when we do it with the wrong motive notice verse number two it's not about being seen also it's about being serious and he says here in verse number two when thou doest thy alms uh, don't sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites in the synagogues and in the streets do that they may have their glory of men verily i say unto you they have their reward and this is something that was actually done in jesus day whenever they would get ready somebody's getting ready to give a big gift down at the synagogue or getting ready to give a big gift down at the temple to give their offering to the lord they would sound a trumpet to let everybody know oh oh Oh, Mr. So-and-so, he's giving his offering. Oh boy, we're going to be okay. We're going to have enough to buy those shoes for the kids. We're going to have enough to buy those clothes for the homeless. Oh boy, thank you, Mr. So-and-so. I'm glad that you blew the trumpet so I could come here and thank you for that. That was very common during that day. Now, I've never been in a church where people, uh, you know, sound a trumpet. Bah, 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 bah. Mr. Uh, Williams is giving his offering today. That doesn't happen, but... There are ways that we can do it to let people be know. We can certainly tell people we can be our own trumpet sometimes. And well, I gave this much in the offering today. Well, I did this this year. This is how much I gave at the end of the year. It's not about that. It's called, when you do that, being a hypocrite. What does the word hypocrite mean? One who feigns to be what he is not. One who has the form of godliness, but without the power. One who assumes to appear pious and virtuous, but is destitute of true religion. How does God feel about hypocrites? Well, he says a lot in the scriptures about them. Here he says he doesn't like their gifts, but all in Isaiah 9, 17, he says, Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young women, neither shall the mercy have mercy on their fatherless and widows, for every one is a hypocrite and an evildoer. Sometimes our hypocrisies affect us in big ways. And the worst way is when God does not bless us because of our hypocrisy hypocrites will turn you away from god and are not good to be around um, that's true sometimes we uh, as christians are considered and called out hypocrites and sometimes we are listen nobody's perfect nobody's perfect but if you are confronted with something wrong are you going to change or not the difference between a hypocrite and somebody who is pure in heart is their willingness to change when god touches their hearts are we willing to do that as, as well? Uh, and again, he talks here about, you know, being compensated. Well, what's this reward that he's talking about here? What's this reward that these guys who are sounding trumpets are getting? And the reward is not a reward from God. It's a reward from man. Well, what's a reward from man? Thumbs up. Good job. How's that going to help you? Not, not really. A lot of words. A lot, of, a lot of nice things. Oh, he's going to give you a pat on the back. There's your reward for serving God as a hypocrite. You got a pat on the back. How does that make you feel? How's that going to help you when things are really tough? It's not. It's not going to do anything. We need to understand that compensation for the hypocrite is the praise of men, which does not amount to very much at all. The last part of this is talking about, yes, being seen and being serious, but let's talk about being secret because that's what it's all about. In verses 3 and 4, he talks about private giving. When thou doest thy alms, let not thy right hand know what thy right hand doeth. It's about private giving. And then we see here that when you do private giving, God gives uh, uh, public blessing. 
Thy, that thine alms may be seen in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So we need to make sure that we give to God in a biblical manner. Because if we do, if you give to God as a hypocrite and you put $1,000 in there, it's not going to please God. You can be giving in proper biblical fashion and give $5 in the offering and somebody else give 1000 hypocritically and God will smile on the $5 giver. Because he did it with the right heart. Remember the story of the of the of the widow who gave her two mites. Jesus said about her, she has given more than anybody else here today because she didn't just give out of her uh, out of her wants. She gave out of her necessities. She gave out of her true needs with a true heart. And God smiles upon things like that. So let me ask you a question: Are you a giver? You know, there is all sorts of ways that we can give in places and uh, areas that we can give. I encourage you, but the Bible teaches that we should give through the local church. And the church gives charity and does charity work and helps people in different places. And that's a wonderful thing. I hope that you will consider giving towards your local church a tithe or an offering. Uh, I think a tithe is a great place to start. 10% is not too much out of all that God has given us. And sometimes it can get tight. I understand that, but I think we should all tithe, and I think we should all give. God blesses those that do, and God uses those tithes to meet needs around the world. We support missionaries at our church, and uh, we do what we can to help in the community, and uh, all these things are wonderful and great. We should give towards the local church. I really encourage you to do that, but if you're going to give to our local church, make sure you do it with the right heart, because that's the most important thing about it. Have a great day. Make sure we give biblically. Take care.